Hi everyone! So an exciting development when I stopped reading um, our last reader out read aloud. I found in the back of the wild robot escapes an epilogue. An epilogue is like if the book continued and gave you an update without all of the details. So I'm going to read you the epilogue and we also have our votes in for the next read aloud book and the winner is ding 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 Stuart Little. So I'm going to finish the epilogue and then I'll transition into starting our very first um, chapters of Stuart Little. Okay, so the epilogue. Autumn had returned to Hilltop Farm. The pasture was coated with frost, but the cows were out there grazing on the last few tufts of fresh grass. Soon, they'd stroll up to the parlor for another milking. Their routine never changed. Mr. Sharif was sitting in his pickup truck with his dog. The man stared out the window across the fields at the new robot. He was keeping a close eye on her. Tech Lab had promised him this one wouldn't run away, but he didn't trust her yet. These days, the children spent most of their free time working on the farm. Jaya had a way with the cows. Jad liked the tools and the machines. They were walk walking through the farm, building buildings together when they heard honking sounds in the sky and a flock of geese glided down the pond. For weeks, geese had been stopping by on their migrations. But there was something different about this flock. I'm gonna pause here, because if you remember at the beginning of the, um, or kind of in the middle of the story, when the children helped Roz escape, how did they decide on how they were gonna find out if Roz had made it safely back to the island or not? You guys remember? They flew in perfect formation and they were led by a small graceful goose. The flock calmly floated on the water. After a while the leader shook his tail feathers, beat his wings, and fluttered over to Jaya and Jad. The goose stood in front of the children. He gazed deep into their eyes. Then he craned his neck around, plucked out one of his feathers and laid it on the ground by their feet. Jaya and Jad looked at each other and smiled. The children had been waiting for this moment. They'd always wanted to know how Roz's story would end. And now they finally knew. The wild robot was back where she belonged. And so that is how it truly ends. It gives you an update um, also on the family that she spent most of the second book with. Okay, so now we're gonna transition into Stuart Little by E.B. White. And here is a great illustration um, on the cover. And this is a very classic book. Um, it has been in print, I think since the 1800s. No, 1900s, early 1900s. He started writing this for his six-year-old niece. Um, so this is kind of a special book because many of you are six years old. And it says here that the pictures, the illustrations, are done by Garth Williams. So I'll make sure I show you all these illustrations as well. Stuart Little by E.B. White. Pictures by Garth Williams. Don't know who these people are yet. Stuart Little. Chapter one, in the drain. When Mrs. Frederick C. Little's second son arrived, everybody noticed that he was not much bigger than a mouse. The truth of the matter was, the baby looked very much like a mouse in every way. He was only about two inches high. One, two. And he had 
a mouse, a mouse's sharp nose, a mouse's tail, a mouse's whisker, and the pleasant, shy manner of a mouse. Here is a picture. Before he was many days old, he was not only looking like a mouse, but acting like one too, wearing a gray hat and carrying a small cane. Mr. and Mrs. Little named him Stuart, and Mr. Little made him a tiny bed out of four clothes pins and a cigarette box. Here is his bed. Now, if you guys are paying attention, do you think that a mouse really wears a gray hat? Hmm, so is this a real story or a made up story? This is a fiction story. That means that it's not real, but it's still enjoyable. Okay. Unlike most babies, Stuart could walk as soon as he was born. When he was a week old, he could climb lamps by shining up the cord. Mrs. Little saw right away that the infant clothes she had provided were unsuitable, and she set to work and made him a fine little blue worsted suit with patch pockets in which he could keep his handkerchief, his money, and his keys. Every morning before Stuart dressed, Mrs. Little went into his room and weighed him on a small scale, which was really meant for weighing letters. At birth, Stuart could have been sent by first-class mail for three cents, but his parents preferred to keep him rather than send him away. And when at the age of a month he had gained only a third of an ounce, his mother was so worried she sent for the doctor. The doctor was delighted with Stuart and said that it was very unusual for an American family to have a mouse. He took Stuart's temperature and found that it was 98.6, which is normal for a mouse. He also examined Stuart's chest and heart and looked into his ears solemnly with a flashlight. Not every doctor can look into a mouse's ear without laughing. Everything seemed to be all right, and Mrs. Little was pleased to get such a good report. Feed him up, said the doctor cheerfully as he left. Here is a picture of the doctor checking Stuart. The home of the little family was a pleasant place near a park in New York City. In the mornings, the sun streamed in through the east windows, and all the littles were up early as a general rule. Stuart was a great help to his parents and to his older brother George because of his small size and because he could do things that a mouse can do and was agreeable about doing them. One day when Mrs. Little was washing out the bathtub after Mr. Little had taken a bath, she lost a ring off her finger and was horrified to discover that it had fallen down the drain Oh, what had I better do? She cried, trying to keep the tears back. If I were you, said George, I should bend a hairpin in the shape of a fish hook and tie it into, tie it onto a piece of string and try to fish the ring out with it. So Mrs. Little found a piece of string and a hairpin, and for about half an hour she fished for the ring. But it was dark down the drain, and the hook always seemed to catch on something before she could get it down to where the ring was. What luck, inquired Mr. Little, coming into the bathroom. No luck at all, said Mrs. Little. The ring is so far down I can't fish it up. Why don't we send Stuart down after it, suggested Mr. Little. How about it, Stuart? Would you like to try? Yes, I would. Stuart replied, but I think I'd better get into my old pants. I imagine it's wet down there. It's all of that, said George, who was trifle annoyed that his hook idea hadn't worked. So Stuart slipped into his old pants and prepared to go down the drain after the ring. 
he decided to carry the string along with him, leaving one end in charge of his father. In charge of his father? I think it means with his father. When I jerk three times on the string, pull me up, he said. And while Mr. Little knelt into the tub, Stuart slid easily down the drain and was lost to view. In a minute or so, there came three quick jerks on the string. I lost my place, sorry guys. And Mr. Little, Little carefully hauled it up. There at the end, was Stuart with a ring safely around his neck. Oh, my brave little son, said Mrs. Little proudly as she kissed Stuart and thanked him. How was it down there? asked Mr. Little, who was always curious to know about the places he had never been to. It was all right, said Stuart, but the truth was the drain had made him very slimy and it was necessary for him to take a bath and sprinkle himself with a bit of mother's violet water before he felt himself again. Everybody in the family thought he had been awfully good about the whole thing. And here is him spraying himself with the violet water of his mother's. Okay, so chapter two is titled House Problems. And I'm not actually going to start on that quite yet um, because we only have a few more minutes left for this recording. And um, I wanna hear what you guys think so far. I wanna know what you think this book is going to be about now that you know a little bit of the characters. Um, and maybe if you want to draw some illustrations of your own regarding your prediction. So if I were to be maybe predicting that I think Stuart Little is going to have another adventure at home, like, hmm, what could be, maybe he has to make dinner, but he's so small. So maybe my illustration would be him trying to cook in this big kitchen with all of these big things. Okay, well, you guys get to decide um, how you want to share your predictions. I can't wait to see them. We are going to be starting something new this week. On Fridays, we are going to be having a, a questions and answers in the morning where all of us that can, that are able to meet um, on a live video, we will. And you can share your work. You can share your predictions. You can share your art. You can share your Africa studies, your math works, anything that you are feeling extra proud about or maybe something that you need extra help with. Okay, so um, all of your parents got an email going over our new schedule and each and every one of you I will get to hopefully talk to this week. Um, I will be doing individual meetings with everyone and I can't wait. I miss you guys so much. Um, so please feel free to email me if you have any um, questions or if you want to send some predictions. Okay, have a wonderful day. Miss you guys. Bye.